Hello, my name is John Rose, and this is my 63rd birthday. June 17th, 2017, I am 63 years old today. And now I can finally do this video and entitle it, 63 year old man reveals secrets on how to have a flat belly. Now I find that fascinating to me because I went to weight loss seminars about 30 years ago and they told us flat out that men and women were different. Men usually gain their weight around their abdominal area to protect their internal organs. Women usually around their hips and buttocks for reproductive purposes, but then there were different shapes of people based on races. There were apple-shaped people and pear-shaped people. And then they said something a long time ago that I didn't understand at the time, but I sure do understand it now. And they said, but for some reason, which we don't know, all old people seem to get weight around their belly. Well, I know what that's all about, my friend. And if you've ever watched any one of my videos, you know what that's all about. And if you haven't, well, this is your lucky day because I can teach you the secret to have a flat belly at no matter what age. It all has to do with the bowel transit time of our food. You see, my friends, we're putting in food that takes too long to go from point A to point B. One of the main reasons why people are thick in this area is because they're processing maybe 12 to 15 meals that are backed up. So the average person in America has about 12 or 15 meals that are backed up here. So you could be doing crunches all day long and never, ever, ever see the results you're looking for. And I see people all the time that are killing themselves, going out and running 10, 15 miles every day to try to lose that little round bowling ball and get that nice lean look that's cut and ripped and they can't get it. And the reason is because it isn't fat. I'm telling you, my friends, the secret to not having a thick belly is understanding what's inside of our food tube. When you eat food that has a very slow bowel transit time, you've got a lot of garbage being processed and you're thick in this area. Now, of course, fat is a, a, is a factor, obviously. Even if your pipes were clean, if you have too much fat on your body and we have fat underneath our skin, that's subcutaneous fat, then you could still be working real hard at that six pack and not be able to see any definition because you got that layer of fat around it. However, one thing I do understand, and that is that it's almost impossible to have too much fat and not have gunk inside your pipes. They kind of go hand in hand. If you're going to be eating too much food to put excess fat on your body, then the chances are your food tube is not going to be able to handle that much food unless it's the right food and it's almost impossible to eat too much of the right food. So if you want a flat stomach, where do you begin? Well, first of all, if you got a little bowling ball down here, you got to get rid of that. So that's where a solid food vacation comes into play. Drink nothing but fresh juices for however long it takes and you'll be surprised at how much weight you'll lose in this area. Now, normally, traditionally speaking, there is no such thing as spot reduction. At least that's what we were told when I was going to these fitness classes as an instructor. In other words, if you want to lose around your belly, you can't do crunches and expect that to do anything. If you have extra fat on your outer thigh, you can't do outer thigh exercises and expect that to spot reduce that any more than inner thigh exercises will reduce the fat on the inner thigh, inner side of your thigh. But in this area, we can do spot reduction if you understand the bowel transit time of your food and change it. You can do that two ways. You can adopt a raw vegan diet. That drastically changes the bowel transit time of your food. But if you really want to take it to the next level, you take a solid food vacation and you clean everything out. And then once you clean everything out, that's when you go to a raw vegan diet. Why? Because everything you eat is out of you the next day. If you're going to be eating this other food, it's going to be backing up. Now, there's a lot to be said for eating one meal a day or intermediate, fa intermediate fasting, where you only eat within a very small window, maybe four to six hours or so. In fact, I, I'm always intrigued when I see anyone a little bit older and that has a flat belly. And, and I can tell they're probably not eating that well, especially if I see them in a the grocery store. I can tell what they have in their basket isn't all that good. And I kind of have an idea of what's going on, but I always ask them, what's your secret? And, and most of the time they tell me I only eat one meal a day. 
So that's one way to have a fat stomach. Now why is that? Because every time you put food in your stomach, it takes away energy down below. That's why snacking all day long is not a good idea, but isn't that what the experts say? Exactly. Our experts are misdirected. They don't know anything. They don't even study the bowel transit time of our food. Otherwise, they would know that snacking throughout the day is not a good option. So, our experts aren't our experts. You've got to be the expert. And you can do that by taking a solid food vacation. Because we're making five main mistakes. Some of y'all aren't going to accept that those are all mistakes. But if you correct all of them and you see your life go to another level, then you might think twice about putting in food, especially if it has the wrong bowel transit time. Now, as I mentioned, there is no such thing as spot reduction. But we can focus on this area. In fact, there's an area right in here, right below, or right in between my rib cage, right in here, where I'm pushing. This is called the transverse abdominal muscles. Now this is one muscle that will help you have a flat stomach. And when it comes to abdominal exercises, I don't do anything specifically really, like abdominal crunches. I haven't done anything like that in 30 years. But I do focus right here in this part of my, belt, my body. I focus on sucking this in, tighten them isometrically. And that's the key about these muscles wedged in between our pelvic girdle. They don't have a range of motion. There's only one way to exercise them. So most people, they're lazy. The belly bulges out and their back sways. So how do you prevent that? How do you correct it? How do you have good posture? Well, you tighten those transverse abs. And when you tighten those transverse abs, it straightens out your back. So if you're having back problems, this many times may be the only thing you have to do. But if you want to have a nice flat step, stomach you want those muscles to be trained all day long and what you're gonna find is that they're very weak in the beginning and and how do you use them well think about this if you if you see someone you want to press what do you do you suck in the stomach well when you do that that's what you're working on you're working on those transverse abs so you should be sucking in your stomach all day long and you should be conscious of that to a point where it's part of your movement it's part of your posture it helps protect your back and make sure it's in alignment. Get out of here. And especially when you exercise and do anything sports oriented, this is where your chi energy derives from, your transverse abdominal areas. So I've, I've trained these muscles a long time ago and I'm very conscious of them. Whenever I'm biking or walking or anything, I make sure they're nice and firm and, and they're solid and they're pulling things back. Uh, I remember I had a, I used to have an old football injury that plagued me for a long time until I learned about these transverse abs and the pain went away within about a week after me working those muscles over and over and over. Now another way to think of using these muscles, if you got on all fours like a dog or a cat and then you rounded your back like a cat, that's using those transverse abdominal muscles. And again, you should be using them all the time. You can do it while you're driving. What I did is I tried to use them 24-7, or at least every moment I was awake, I was going to say, I'm tightening them, I'm tightening them, I'm tightening them, because I could feel it helping my back, a whole back injury. And I kept forgetting, I kept forgetting, but I tried and I tried, and I was probably about 50% successful. But ever since then, I now have a very conscious awareness of where those are at, and when I'm walking and everything, whatever I do, I'm always tightening those transverse abs. So when you do abdominal crunches, what's the first thing they tell you to do? Belly to the floor. Press your back, the smaller your back, to the floor. How do you do that? You press your transverse abs. Now, if you do want to go for the six pack, personally, I don't, I'm not going to do that. That's why I don't have these big bulging muscles. You might see a little remnants of them in there from long ago, but I don't train them. Now, when I bike, I'm twisting and torquing a bunch, and I'm always doing things to, to work my abs in that area. But as far as going up and down crunches, I don't do that. But if you're going to do them, I'm going to teach you a secret. I learned back when I was doing a 30-minute abdominal class at the Houstonian. 30 minutes nonstop ab work. And when I did one thing, I saw results within a week that I wasn't seeing before, and yet I was doing it for 30 minutes. And what it's called is hesitating abdominal crunches. Now, normally, when you're doing abdominal crunches, especially to music, that has a, you know, there's eight counts in, in, in the music, so you do it every two counts, up and down, up and down, up and down, and you pick music that's at a pretty slow pace, like 120 beats per minute or something like that. But what you do with hesitating abdominal crunches, I'm gonna illustrate this vertically, I think I can do it. Normally what you're doing, 
you know, put your hands on the back and you're going up and down and up and down. But what you do with hesitating abdominal crunches is you go up and then you hold it. And then you go up and then you hold it. Then you go up and then you hold it. And then you go back down. So it's up, 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 down. You do it, that's how you do the eight feet. You go up and hold it, up and hold it, up and hold it, and then you go back down. And why do you do that? Because the body knows how to cheat when it gets fatigued. The whole idea, if you want to tone your muscles or body, you use the overload principle. You make the muscle tired, you make it keep working. But when the body gets tired, it knows how to cheat. And what it will do is it will do two, one of two things usually. One is it will start using momentum, it will start swinging. So you've got to take the momentum away, and that's what the hesitating crunches do. Otherwise, you're kind of getting, you know, now you're rolling into it, and that's not the way to do it. Another mistake I always see people doing, they do a full setup. Once you get past a certain range of motion, it's all hip flexors. You're not working your abs anymore. So if you want to focus on the abs, do the hesitating crunches, and then the other way, the body will cheat. If you let it, it'll change the angle of motion, or the angle just slightly. So if you're working your inner thighs, let's say this is my inner thigh, and I'm going like this, when I get really tired, I'll slightly change that angle a little bit, I'll be using different muscles. So good form is important if you're trying to tone the body, but most importantly, take away the momentum, make it work, control the movements. And remember, the best way to have a flat stomach is to eat food with the right bowel transit time. Because when you can do that, my friends, you're, you're going to basically become disease proof because because to become the disease proof you have to be fireproof you can't be cooking your foods now some cooked foods will go through the system fast enough maybe some vegetable soup or something like that but when you start getting into beans and legumes and stuff like that you're going to see that you're going to start getting thick in this area again go back to eating meat you're going to start noticing you're getting thick in this area again so if you're anything like me, it's going to be a learned experience. You're going to eat as good as you can. You'll do a solid food vacation. You get cleaned out. You realize, oh my God, that's what I'm supposed to look like. And then you'll eat good and you eat bad. You get that stuff back in there and you have to go back on a cleanse again. So hopefully you can learn from my experiences. It took me, took me two years on six different occasions before I realized, number one, I wasn't going the distance. And then when I finally went the distance, when I finally realized how much of a cesspool I had inside of me, a 20 pound cesspool, once I finally realized that, then I was motivated to not put anything in that had the wrong bowel transit time. And so that's what life is all about, my friends. If you want to be happy and you want a fat stomach, they go hand in hand if you do it the right way. Now there are unhealthy ways to have a fat stomach. You want to do it the healthy way by eating nutrient-dense foods. And that's, I tell you, my friends, when you want to make life exciting, eat the right foods, have a fat stomach, and then you're in for a treat.